and I can't remember seeing a song performed about love which really puts its finger on the excitement and the worry that comes with that as brilliantly as what that song did and what that performance Hello did. everyone and welcome back to my channel, Dr Nick Analyzes. I'm a university lecturer and I tend to react to and analyze various videos on YouTube and try to pick them apart in terms of how useful they are in informing us about mental health and well-being. I recently made a video about an amazing artist called Huya Chenyu. I know I've said that wrong, but I'm sure that that person won't, won't mind. You should check out that video. It's, a, it's very, very cool. Anyway, in the comments, someone said there's another one who's equally as talented and goes by the name of Dimash. And so what I've done is I've literally gone to YouTube and typed in Dimash and uh, I'm gonna analyze a song of his. It is called Love Is Like A Dream. So I hope you like what I go for. All right then, let's click play. Dimash Kudaibergen. Okay, I know it's barely started, but I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is a performance. I don't know if he's, this is a competition video. I don't know if this is just, he's already really famous and he's got loads of fans and this is just the audience. I don't know what it is, but I'm excited to, uh, excited to see it. Я в глаза твои, как в зеркало смотрюсь, отражение потерять свое боюсь. Не хочу, чтоб я лишь костем был, сумраки ночей и судьбе твоей. Я люблю тебя, как любят жизнь не раз, словно солнце в мире не было до нас, от забот и мелких ссор я тебя увел, и ключи от счастья для тебя нашел, для тебя. Нашел любовь, похожая на сон, сердце с хрустальных перезвон, твое волшебное люблю, я тихим эхом. Повторю, любовь похожая на сон. Счастливым сделала мой дом. Но вопреки законам сна, пускай не кончится она. Я прощаю одиночество и грусть. Ты сказала в них я больше не вернусь. Так бывает только в сладком сне, но любовь у нас на его сейчас. Не в глазах твоих себя не потерять. По разлуке нам любовь не разменять. И немыслимой ценой, и своей. 
своей мечтой Заслужил ты это счастье быть с тобой Быть всегда с тобой Любовь похожая на сон Сердце с хрустальных перезвон Ее волшебные люблю, я тихим махом повторю, любовь похожая на сон, счастливым сделала мой дом, но вопреки законам сна. Потрясающий тандем. Спасибо Невероятная большое. песня. Спасибо! Вау! 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 Right, what's going on in my head? Well, the first thing that pops out of watching a song like that and a performance like that is the sheer talent of the individual, Dimash. Um, and I'm not really just talking about in terms of his voice. Like, I, I'm going to assume that a lot of people talk about the range in his voice because he starts off singing really quite low and he goes right through the range, right to like a ludicrously high, uh, high note, but always in tune. So I assume a lot of people talk about how talented he is as a singer. But I also think there's the delivery of the performance. Um, and, and the main question that was going through my head as I was watching it was, did he write this? And there are, whether the answer to that question is yes or no is equally remarkable, right? Because if the answer is yes, he did write that, then it makes sense that he pulled off the performance in such a believable way. It didn't feel tokenistic. Do you know what I mean? He felt like he was really feeling that. And if he didn't write that, then how did he get that level of feel? How did he get inside the song that much to be able to pull off such sort of like a believable performance? You know, that would make him a really, really good actor as well as a really good singer. And so though, if he did write it as well, then what we've got here is someone who can sing, really sing. Someone who can pull off a performance in, an in a captivating, um, you know, a mesmerizing, almost like, you know, I didn't stop the video there. I was pretty transfixed 
throughout it. And a lot of that comes from the performance of it. But we could also have a writer, you know, someone who writes lyrics that have such depth. And so I can understand why someone would have pointed me in uh, in this direction. I can understand the comparison with uh, Hua Chenyu as well. In terms of the, the lyrics... What, um, what delicate lyrics. They point to something that exists in the world from the world of psychology that not a lot of people really take the time to think about. The lyrics point to the, the dance that happens between excitement and worry when we fall in love. You know, the way he was singing that was just an excitement at feeling this way, right? At having someone's love, having someone give their love to you and you giving your love to someone else. And like, we've all had those sort of like feelings of love. I mean, don't get me wrong, like love changes over the course of a relationship, right? It starts off with like this puppy dog sort of love, uh, the sort of love that I would have had when I first met my wife. And maybe I'd be writing poetry and writing songs at that point. And then and I've now been with my wife 13 years and it's a different type of love, a deeper type of love. But what a feeling it is to know that I, I have that, um, I have that experience of having someone unconditionally love me and me unconditionally love them. It's, it's sort of like, my main reason for being alive, right? You know, and if you look at the research on human connection, on the importance of having meaningful social relationships, they're the biggest predictor of happiness. So when he's talking about like my happiness, he's right. You know, like those, um, those our relationships, our meaningful relationships, they are, are, tend to be our reason for being. You know, we want to have those relationships. We want to have those feelings. Those feelings make us feel alive. And so, you know, to see the excitement that he has at having that is um, is lovely to witness. And then there's the other side of the coin, right? Because the second that you give your love away to someone, the second that you are in love, you open up the possibility of hurt and pain. And the human mind is really skilled at getting there. Your human mind is really skilled at getting you too. What if I lose them? And it's amazing how that can play out in relationships. Like that, that little seed of doubt can really be harmful in relationships sometimes, right? Because we can be so scared of losing someone that it becomes almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, we'll do things that actually increase the chances of us losing someone, like, I don't know, checking on them lots to make sure they're not like messaging other people, for example. Um, some of us will shut down relationships before they even really have time to flourish because of a fear of getting hurt. It's almost like, you know, in order to be able to really love someone, you also need to be able to accept that, uh, the possibility of hurt. And you know what? It's not even a possibility. It's an inevitability, right? You think about it, right? Imagine you fall in love with someone. Unless you die, which isn't a great option, unless you die, that person could leave, could get ill, could die. Do you know what I mean? And what's going to happen when the person that you've given your love to is gone? You're going to feel horrific. And so a lot of people react to that, to that realization by just thinking, do you know what? It's easier not to love at all. And yeah, what sort of life do we have as a human being if we're not going to give away our love? And so, you know, I sometimes it takes things like music to illustrate stuff to us about life as a human being. And I can't remember seeing a song performed about love, which really puts its finger on the excitement and the worry that comes with that as brilliantly as what that song did and what that performance did and what that voice did by this fella that I've never heard of before called Dimash. Seems like a superstar to me. Wouldn't surprise me if he's massive in a different part of the world. And it wouldn't surprise me if very soon people over here in the UK begin to become more familiar with him and his work. 
All right, another brilliant video to watch. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you've uh, taken something from it. Take care. Bye-bye.